Hello, I'm Teacher Robin. Welcome to another live streaming class. If this is your first time to join us, let me explain how the classes work. Today, we're going to be talking about the Rugby World Cup. So if you have a question during the class, you can write your question in the comments and I'll be checking your questions as we go along. So if you have a question about today's topic or if you just want to say hello, then feel free to write uh, that in the comments, okay? So today's topic, why have I chosen this? Uh, rugby is a sport that is popular all over the world and uh, the Rugby World Cup is coming up very soon. So I want to make sure that you have all of the vocabulary that you need in English to be able to watch and enjoy the game with your friends and family um, and even if you're traveling in a foreign country. All right, so let's start with some essential rugby vocabulary. All right, so what is the objective of the game of rugby? All right, the purpose is to score more points than the opposition. Okay, this is uh, the basic thing. A match lasts 80 minutes with a 10 minute break halfway through the match. Okay, so this is the basics. Um, what are the positions in rugby? We have the forward positions, or sorry, we have, yes, we have the forward positions including the hooker, the prop, second row, flanker, and number eight. Okay, so these are interesting names if you've never um, heard of them before and then the back positions include the scrum half the fly half the inside center the outside center the winger and the fullback Okay, you probably won't remember all of these but just so you know these are the main positions in rugby All right, so how do you score points? What do you have to do? All right? Uh, you we have a try which is awarded when a player places the ball down in their opponent's dead ball area behind the goal, okay? And this is worth five points. All right, what else can you do in a rugby match to score points? A conversion, okay? So this is a free kick, which comes after a try that we just defined, okay? A successful kick needs to pass between the upper post and the top bar on the goal, okay? And if you uh, score a conversion, then you receive three points, okay? How else can you score points? A penalty kick is awarded when the opposing team does something that is against the rules, so then the other team can uh, have a penalty kick, and if you score, then you earn three points. And finally, we have a drop goal is uh, kicked out of the hand and must bounce, so must bounce on the ground, and uh, if this happens, then you can earn your team three points as well. Okay, let's look at some of the rules. All right, how, uh, how can we play the game? Each team starts with 15 players and seven substitutes, all right? Uh, what about the field? What is the field like? The field must be roughly 100 meters long and 70 meters wide, okay? And the game has one referee and two touch judges, okay? So what is a touch judge? Uh, they assist the referee in his or her decision making. Okay, so now let's talk about the World Cup that is coming up in Japan. All right, this is going from September to November. There are, it starts with 20 teams and it is split into four pools of five teams. Okay, so a pool is kind of like a group, a group of teams. All right, so it includes the four previous World Cup winners, which are Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and England. Okay, and now some fun facts uh, about rugby. Okay, the same whistle has been used to start every Rugby World Cup since the 1900s. Okay, so this is a very old whistle. All right, uh, rugby actually introduced the singing of national anthems before matches. So um, this is something very common in football, American football, soccer, baseball, etc. But it was actually introduced by rugby. And uh, rugby has been only played as an Olympic sport four times, and this occurred between 1900 and 1924. All right, and did you know, more fun facts, that the highest number of points scored in a Rugby World Cup was 162. Okay, so that is huge. 
and the highest number of red cards given out in a rugby world match, World Cup match, sorry, is three. All right, great. So, hold on, yeah. Uh, whoops, I forgot to answer, to uh, include questions. Okay, so actually, um, I hope that this uh, has been a good review of the rugby, uh, everything re related to rugby. For you, I was going to include some questions, but actually feel free to just ask whatever you want if something wasn't clear. I am actually not an expert on rugby, but I will check and get back to you later. If you have a question about something specific, I would be happy to look that up for you. So be sure to write it in the comments, okay? So now that we finished our overview of rugby, let me tell you more about our course here at ABBA. We have a complete course from beginners to business level featuring 144 units. Each unit uh, starts with a short film, then you have a video class explaining the grammar and you have exercises um, related to the unit which cover all of the skills which are speaking, reading, writing, and listening. So that is all covered in our complete course. So if you're not a student with us already, you can go to abbaenglish.com and sign up. So in addition to our course, which you can take with you wherever you go, on your, uh, on your phone, or you can study at home on the web, we also have many other resources that you can use to study and improve your English with us every day. We have our blog, which is called our ABBA Journal. And on our blog, you can find information about any topic you could possibly think of related to English. So grammar, English for travel, English for business, um, even more articles related to sports. So if sports is something that's interesting for you, then uh, be sure to check out our blog. You can find more articles there and uh, brush up on your English with us every day. And we are on all of the social media networks, Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, and Instagram. So check those out because we are posting new content on those channels every day. And so that's a really great way to do a quick exercise or learn something new as you're on your way to work, uh, as you are getting ready to go to bed at night, all right? So um, let's see. It seems that we are having a problem to uh, read your comments. So what I'm going to do is as soon as this class is over, I am going to check them and I will write, uh, I will answer your questions. Sorry for the technical error. Hopefully we'll get that fixed for, uh, for next week's class, which brings me to my last slide, uh, different ways to say, for example. So tune in next week. We're going to talk about a more practical topic. Uh, we've done series like this before, different ways to say, because sometimes, especially when we're not native speakers, we kind of get stuck saying the same expressions or phrases over and over again and for example is one of those so we're going to look at different ways other ways um, synonyms that we can use to say for example so like if we're giving a presentation at work or something like that you can sound even more native if you use some of these um, expressions so tune in for that same time next week Thanks again for joining. Sorry for the technical difficulties. I want to thank you. I can't see your names, but I want to thank everyone who is watching and I'll get to your questions uh, right after the class is over. So I hope that you're now ready to uh, watch the Rugby World Cup. Tell me in the comments which team, which country you're going to be rooting for. I'd love to hear from you and any other questions you have related to today's topic. So have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye.